Conan joins forces with the Acer men to track down a murderous rival tribe, but he doesn't realize he's being watched by a beautiful, otherworldly force. Will Conan survive the heat of battle in a war among men, only to become a plaything of a god? Let's find out in our review of Conan the Barbarian number 14 from Titan Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Conan the Barbarian number 14. Writer Jim Zub gives readers a masterful object lesson on how to build a story that stretches over multiple issues without filling the pages with decompressed fluff. Conan the Barbarian number 14 doesn't take readers very far in Conan's quest to find his faith, which was the start of this particular arc, but what it does do is build relationships, reveal the undercurrent of a spiritual world that exists outside of Conan's perceptions, and teases one heck of a meeting in the future. You still get all the trappings of a typical Conan story, such as brutal violence, stoic atmosphere, and all the piece parts to go with it, but this issue has more, so much more. Before we dig in, let's take a look at what happened the last time in Conan the Barbarian number 13. Conan sought out a challenge to test his mettle, recalling his father's words of Krom, they are God that they pray to, but unsure of their validity, Conan threw himself against nature's fury, seeking purpose in combat. He took out his first trio of wolves and started slaying a brutal bear, but Conan recognized the power in his steel-set strength. On returning to his campsite, Conan discovered he was joined now by wolves of a different kind, Acer men, ready to take the Sumerian's hard-fought game or his life. All this time, a mysterious woman silently watched from the trees above. That brings us to the current issue, Conan the Barbarian number 14. Conan refuses to submit to the Acer men who invaded his camp, so the Barbarian lets his fists respond to their demands. While the one-sided fight rages, the mysterious woman from the trees we saw at the end of issue number 13 watches on, drawn to Conan's strangely bright spirit while lamenting the predictable fragility of mortals. Writer Jib Zub expertly turns a simple fight into a scene of foreshadowing by starting the issue with narration from the mysterious woman's point of view. It's clear her skimpy outfit, and it is as skimpy as it gets <laughs> without going all the way, doesn't present a problem because she isn't entirely human or mortal. We get a stronger tease about our identity later in the issue, but Zub sets up a super intriguing premise about Conan's quest for faith coming to a head in a way he couldn't have suspected at all. Conan bloodies his attackers, but the fight is stopped when the Acerman's chief, a gentleman by the name of Nord, arrives to put a stop to it. The level-headed chief recognizes Conan is a formidable fighter and hunter, so he offers safe passage if he would be willing to share the bear he caught in the last issue and stay with the tribe for a few days. Conan agrees despite the protests of the men Conan beat, and then what follows is a day or two of cultural sharing, feasting, and a development of mutual respect. The preceding scene is key for new readers because it underscores how Conan and the circles he travels in can be a place of peace and respect when men work together for mutual benefit. Conan sometimes get a bad rap as a raging berserker who swings his sword at every opportunity, just cutting things around him like he's some kind of strange, bizarre, axe-wielding murderer. But that's not true. The scene brings that point home succinctly by showing that in the right circumstances, surrounded by the right people, he's actually quite a gentle, well, gentle may not be the right word, but at least a peaceful soul. During a night of feasting around the campfire, Asar war horns sound from a very far away, but close enough, obviously, that you can hear it. Njord recognizes the signal as a call for help, so he gathers a group to ride to the rescue. However, Conan is first on a horse, charging to the direction of the sound. All the while, the mystery woman watches the scene and wonders about the motivations of the men. She knows death is coming. She knows there's conflict and she wonders why her father bothers to listen to their prayers when all these mortals do is fight. Ah, uh, see, now now we're getting to it. If you were wondering what's the deal with this topless woman running around the, <laughs> the wintry woods, now you see, or at least get the hint of what's going on here. Zub never outright declares it in this issue, but you could surmise the mystery woman is the daughter of the god the Acer men pray to, the god named Ymir. Much like Conan, the Acer men believe in Ymir, but don't know if he really listens or even exists. We can guess that Conan is about to have a brush with the gods, just not the one he suspected, which heightens the intrigue of this arc considerably. When Conan and the Acermen reach the sound of the alarm, they're too late to save the village. A rival gang, a group of red-haired Vanir, have come and gone, leaving slaughtered men, women, and children. Conan joins the men in putting out the burning longhouse and saving whoever he can, earning even more respect from Njord and his fellow Acermen. 
When Yord vows to hunt down the veneer responsible for the attack, Conan declares he will join them to avenge the slain women and children. What follows is a montage scene of sorts where Njord, Conan, and the Acer men that accompanied them trudge through a wintry storm sent to them by Ymir. This is according to the woman who is narrating this entire issue. She believes that her father is testing their mettle and wants to see if they were strong enough to overcome. The mystery woman follows their trek unseen even in close proximity, which gives you a clue about whether or not her presence is tangible to the perceptions of the men, including Conan. And when the group finds its prey, a brutal fight begins. The issue concludes with heavy losses for the Aesir and the Veneer, a black-haired stranger who stands brightest among them all, and a declaration of interest from a woman probably not used to hearing the word no. Overall, Jim Zub gives readers a standard yet engaging Conan story on one level, then adds a supernatural layer on top of that to expand the narrative and scale when the gods choose Conan for the next bit of fun. Everyone understands the idea of wrestling with belief in the unseen. I mean, how do you put all your trust and, and desires in something that you can't see, feel, hear, or touch, which is exactly Conan's dilemma from the previous issue starting this arc, but it's quite something else when the unseen decides to answer back. So we can't wait to find out what happens in the next issue, and we really hope Jim Zub pays off this tease in a big way. Let's switch gears and talk about the art. It's no secret that we loved Robert De La Torre's art on Conan since issue one, because he captured that dark, brooding, bronze-aged aesthetic that we love so much. That said, Doug Braithwaite stepped in in the previous issue and is continuing here. His style is brighter yet more detailed, and the style makes the figure work look powerful, makes the violence look gritty, and the gore is there, but it's also, uh, I would say, appropriate for the scene. And the all-around outstanding set of visuals really make this comic stand out. Braithwaite isn't better or worse than De La Torre, just different. But in this case, different is good. If you're a new reader jumping into the series, you may wonder where this particular arc fits in with the timeline since Titan took it over as, as a whole. Jim Zub doesn't spell it out precisely, but this adventure appears to take place after the first arc, where Conan encounters the undead armies of the Black Stone, but before Conan eventually becomes a seafaring pirate with the love of his life, Belit, which leads into the second arc much later. Final thoughts when we think about Conan the Barbarian number 14? It's another killer, no pun intended, issue that reminds readers that Conan and the world he travels in has multiple layers ripe for exploring. Jim Zub takes what would be a boilerplate story in lesser hands and creates intrigue on multiple levels. Plus, Doug Braithwaite's deceptively detailed art is outstanding. This was a great issue from front to back and we can't wait to see what happens next. Therefore, Conan the Barbarian number 14 earns a 9 out of 10. This is another great issue that underscores how much care Titan is putting into the title. The only reason the score isn't just a little bit higher is the lack of a decisive wow moment that knocks your socks off. It's a small quibble, but it is there. But what do you think? Do you like what Titan has done with Conan since they picked up the license? Give us a thumbs up if you do, and leave us a comment below with which character from Conan lore you'd like to see next. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the rate review and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.